This conference will now be recorded. All right. So who would like to uh, open us up in a word of prayer? Bruce, could you open us up in a word of prayer? Sure. Um, my gracious Father, we praise you and thank you again for another opportunity to study your word. And we invite the presence of, of your spirit to be with us, that our minds would be clear and to anoint us with, uh, with the spirit of understanding as we study. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And Twyla, um, I know you're driving, so I'm not going to really uh, uh, folk, uh, direct things to you. But anytime you want to jump in, you feel free to do so. Everyone else, let's turn to Ephesians 3, 4. Ephesians 3, 4. Do we have any version available that is not King, King James? Okay. That's not King James. Let me read uh, NASB. By referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. That's NASB. All right. So does somebody have in context Ephesians 3, 3 through 7? in King James. Okay, I can read that. Go ahead, Patty. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when we read, we may understand my knowledge, uh, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, uh, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the great grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. And the verse we are going to be focusing on, I'll have somebody else read that in King James. It's Ephesians 3, 4. Sherilyn, can you read that for me? In King James? Yes, please. Ephesians 3, 4, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Amen. Amen. So in this verse, how many words appear more than once? Uh, ye. That's the one I see. And how many times do we see that? Twice. Exactly. So we have ye starting tw uh, repeated twice in this verse. And then let's uh, go down to the segments. This is where we basically break the verse into different uh, segments and such. Um, Patty, since you've been here the longest, you want to go ahead and uh, start out on how you would break this uh, down? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, whereby. Uh, so it's speaking of what happened before. And then when you read... Um, and, and then you may understand uh, his knowledge and then in the mystery of Christ. Excellent. Anyone else have another way to break this down um, as well? And welcome, Boniface. Anyone else have another way to break this down? The only difference I made in this uh, process was I put my knowledge in the mystery and then of Christ at the very end. Um, but other than that, I was right where you are there, Patty. 
All right. So the definitions that I have from Iger, Apps, Bible, Concordance, and Strong's offline are understand, knowledge, and mystery. We dealt with mystery just a couple of session, uh, recordings ago, so let me read understand and knowledge uh, as given by Igor Apps and Bible Concordance and Strong's offline. Understand, to exercise the mind, observe, that is figuratively to comprehend, heed, consider, perceive, think, understand, occurs 19 times in 14 KJV verses. 10 times equals understand, two times equals perceive, one time equals consider, one time equals think. Then knowledge, a mental putting together that is intelligence or concretely the intellect, knowledge, understanding, occurs seven times in seven KJV verses, six times equals understanding, one time equals knowledge. All right, let's dig into the who, what, where, when of it all. In this verse, what do we have for, uh, for representations of who? Ye. Ye, absolutely. Ye is in there. And uh, what's that? Wow. My. My, my, yes, absolutely. My is in there. And there's one other one that I saw in there. Christ. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How about, and Irene has just joined us now as well. How about, uh, how about what? And if, if at any time you guys want me to back up or whatever, you just say it and I, I, I will do exactly that. What about what? Knowledge. So what's taking place in this verse? Uh, God is making something known and it's a, you know, something that's not perhaps well understood because it is a mystery. But as much as the mystery is spoken of in the New Testament by Paul, I really believe that God wants us to understand what he's talking about there. Totally agree. How is he making it known? The writing. By revelation. Well, but using the exact, exact, exact word there, uh, Bruce, what did you have there? Was that Bruce? Well, when we read, in other words, we're reading something that he's written. Yep, we're reading. So that's definitely what we're reading. And when we are reading, what are we doing? Are reading to do what? Learn. Learn. Knowledge. Based on the verse, learn, based on the words in this verse, what would how, how would we understand the word learn within the process? Understand. Understand exactly. And what is it now that now we go over to what you were talking about, Patty? What are we reading to understand? The mystery. The mystery. Okay. The knowledge of the mystery. I would agree completely. Okay. So to understand that whole knowledge of mystery and it's a it's a lifetime process, but we're reading to understand the knowledge of the mystery of Christ. Absolutely. Any other thoughts there? Let's go on to the where. And by the oh, by the way, Ken is in the process of joining us too. So Ken is here. Irene will be doing interpreting. Um, so what do we have for aware? In the mystery. Interesting. I didn't personally see that as aware, but I could see how, you know, that's, that's a culmination 
of it. I could definitely see that. It's not what I put down. Doesn't mean that's the only right answer for sure. For what I put down was whereby, like um, to me, whereby is like, it's kind of like a now word to me. Um, this is how we are able to move forward because because of that, uh, of, of these elements that are, are about to be unfolded. Any other thoughts there? All right, why was this verse written? For understanding that we may understand. I put down ye may understand. But before we, uh, going back the, uh, to what I said earlier, before uh, the words ye may understand, we must, we have to do something, in some way, we have to do something else before we can understand anything. What is that uh, something else as referred to in this verse? Read. Ye read. The, the 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 why is that we ye read you know the the why is not that ye put it on the shelf and see how much dust it can collect the 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 why is that ye read and as to ye read ye may understand and this is not something that the father or the son wants to keep hidden from us this is something he, they very much want us to get and grasp. Otherwise, they would not have given us their word. They would not have given us the word of life because we would not be able to understand. We can understand it, and we need to move forward in that understanding, in the victory of Christ, which indeed is a mystery. Okay. Let's see, going to win. What does anybody see as it relates to the win of this verse? The previous verses are fulfilled when we read. So say that again, Patty. The whereby says, in other words, it's referring to the previous verses. So when we read, Mm. Uh, then we will understand. Mm. Amen. Amen. Which is an active process. You, you're, you're not going to, with a car manual, maybe you'll read it once and you'll put it down because you read it. Or maybe you'll look up what you need in order to fix the, uh, the problem with the car. But you're not going to make it a part of your life. With the word of God, it, 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 you have to make it a part of your life. It, it should be a consuming part of your life. Um, the, has anybody ever heard the best way, what the best way to, to learn a new language is? Speak it over and over. Even better than that, have everybody around you speaking it over and over and nothing else. Total immersion. So the only way you can communicate is with that language. That's the best way to learn it because you, if you don't speak that language within that context, you're going to be in the world of trouble on many things like eating and other things. All right. What about how? What's the how of this verse? The how of this verse that I see, again, it's really targeting in on the same principles, but it's the, the whole reason for this verse is to show us that we can understand the mystery of Christ. Otherwise, they wouldn't have given it to us. 
Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to uh, jump into uh, the commentary of encouragement for this week. Why are these words written within the Word of God? Can somebody, Boniface, can you read Ephesians 4, 29 for me? Ephesians 4, 29. Are you there, Boniface? Yes, getting it in a moment. Uh, very, I can very faintly hear you. Mm, can you hear me now? Much better. All right, I have it. Okay. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of identity. Ed, edit, edifying that yeah. that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Absolutely, absolutely. So, how much corrupt communication? How much corrupt none. communication? None. Absolutely none. We are to edify. We are to edify the body. We are to edify and build up. We are to encourage one another. Perhaps it is because of this principle, Luke 6.45. Bruce, can you read Luke 6.45 for me? Sure, hold on a second. I'm almost there. Take your time. Luke 6.45, a good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and, e and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. So if we're bringing forward encouragement and praise and uplifting and things like that, what must be in our heart? Good things. Absolutely. But if we're bringing forward criticism and judgment and, and backbiting and that, what must be in our heart? Evil. Yeah, exactly. As we bring into our minds heart, Good or bad, it transforms accordingly. Second Corinthians three eighteen. Patty, can you read Second Corinthians three eighteen for me? Okay. Okay. Three. But we all, with open face, beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Are we changed, brothers and sisters? If we are not even in the process of changing, then we are in trouble. We have not arrived. We are in the process. And so if a believer or even a non-believer gets it wrong, we're, we're to take a two by four and hit them upside the head. That's what this says, right? No. No, absolutely not. We're to work with them. We're to love them. We're to, we're to, we're to minister to them. We're to encourage them. We're to edify them. We're to guide them the best we can. That's our responsibility. It is on that note that we need to be extremely cautious about what we hear, watch, and even read. Can, uh, Sherilyn, can you read Isaiah 820? 
uh, Isaiah 8, 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. How much light? No. No light. No light in them. We don't want to be in that situation. Which leads us to this thought, Ephesians 5.11. Uh, Boniface, I do believe we're back to you. Bon uh, Ephesians 5.11. Yes, let me get it. Okay. Okay. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of the darkness, but rather reprove them. Amen. You notice how we are still having here an interaction with them? We're, we're not going to agree with them. What are we trying to do? We're trying to call their attention to situations. Now, I know it goes in 2 Corinthians. I'm not sure if I'm going there, uh, where it says, you know, expel the one from the church. But that's only after a huge process. And the reason for doing that is it found in that same verse where it says, that they may see what's going on and turn from their ways. That way they can come back to the fruitful works of light rather than the unfruitful works of darkness. However, when we read the word of God, it is completely different. Here is just a glimpse of what the word of God is to those who will choose to embrace it. Psalm 119.05 uh I, yeah bruce psalm 119 i think i said that wrong psalm 119 that's the one we did this morning in Sabbath school yes it is my word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. It is a lamplight in the midst of darkness. Isaiah 40, verse 8. Patty? Okay. Isaiah 40, verse 8. Yes, I'm... Okay, verse 8, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. And, and that means, you know, I, 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 we do uh, hydroponics, uh, inside gardening, um, which, you know, it's really cool to watch the cabbages as they're coming forward, even this time of year. And, but... I, I, what I know about those cabbage plants is they're going to have their cycle and they're going to die. The word of God is there every season. It is blooming every day. There, there is no off season for it. It continues on and on and on forever. Solid. You want something in this coronavirus infested world? that we have, it's the word of God. That's what will stand. That's what is firm. That's what we can rely on. It is stability in the midst of instability. Isaiah 18.30. Isaiah 18.30. Sherilyn? Wait a minute. I, uh, I read two different lines at the same time. Let's try Isaiah 40, verse 8. No, that's what we just did. Psalm 1830. Okay. Psalm 
As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. Amen. It is perfectly trustable in the midst of great sin. Psalm 119, 130. Boniface, Psalm 119, 130. 119, 119. The entrance of the words giveth light. The given understanding unto the simple. It is the light of understanding in the midst of chaos. Psalms 33 4, Bruce. Uh, Psalms 33 4. Right. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his words are done in truth. Amen. It is truly right in the midst of horrendous wrong. And it is so much more. It always will be. Um, let's see, where am I at? Patty, I'm going to have you read uh, Matthew 24, 35. Okay. This is such an encouraging verse here. Such an encouraging verse. Okay, it says, <clears throat> Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words <clears throat> shall not pass away. Everything else is rubbish, absolutely rubbish. But the words of God, that we can trust. This is why it is so amazing to listen to, though we are given serious counsel, not to leave it at just the hearing of it. James 1.22. James 1.22, Sherilyn. Um, Excuse me, okay. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If we hear and we don't do, we've got a problem. But rather, we are to keep it as we continue to learn more and more. Luke eleven twenty eight. Boniface? Yes, look. <coughs> Let me get it. Uh, baby. <laughs> but he said, Ye rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. And keep it. Absolutely. As we do, we will find this result. John 7, 38. Bruce? John 7, 38. He uh, that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's an exciting verse. Do you want to have rivers of living water flowing out of you? We need to keep. We need to do. We need to be a people of action, not a people of simply sitting in our pew and not doing anything. We need to move forward with whatever is possible. 
as the mysteries of Christ begin to flourish and unfold each and every day within your life. Colossians 1.27. Uh, let's see, who am I on? Uh, I think it's Patty. Colossians 1.27. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, Colossians 1, 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So what is the riches of the glory of the mystery? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. <clears throat> As we get to know who Christ is, the understanding of Paul's knowledge will be unfolded to you. Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Um, let's see, I think that's Sherilyn. Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that seeketh receiveth, and he that, um, I'm sorry, for everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Amen. We are a people of action. We are a people that need to be pursuing the relationship, pursuing understanding the mystery that is unfolded in Ephesians 3, 4. You know, um, we have a little bit of time, and last week we only got through part of Ephesians 3.3. 3. So I uh, let's go ahead and step back and read Ephesians 3.3. 3. Can somebody just read that verse for me? I have it. Go ahead, Boniface. How that, by elevation, he made known unto me the mystery, as Lord afore in few words. Awesome. Now, we've already gone through uh, kind of dissecting it, the who, what, where, when, why of it all. Um, yeah, however, well, yeah. It's already done that, so let's go ahead and go. You can always catch that recording, um, so you can listen to that on gracefultouch.org forward slash blog, all lowercase, forward slash blog, forward slash study, all lowercase. So that is available there. Um, and uh, there is actually, for those who know of uh, Yolanda, uh, I have a recipe book that includes many of her recipes that's also there absolutely free for the taking. Um, so let's, and that again, just to let you know, is gracefultouch.org forward slash blog forward slash study. It's got all the recordings. But uh, let's dig into the... Uh, Commentary of Encouragement for 3.3. 3. Speaking of prophetic revelation, here's one. Daniel 2, 27 through 30. Let's see, I think uh, we have, we're on Bruce. Bruce, go ahead and read Daniel 2, 27 through 30. This is kind of the okay. preamble of the dream coming forward. Daniel 2, 27 through 30. Daniel 2, 27 to 30. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers go unto the king? But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter day, the dream and the vision of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, 
by thought came and seized thy mind upon the bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And he that revealed the secret maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any other living. But for their sake, that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou might know the thought of thy heart. I consider I that the... Thought, to what verse? What's that? Yeah, that, that, that's it for right now. Um, I consider that kind of the preamble. I'm just calling that the preamble of this dream being revealed. Then in verses 31 through 35, we see the dream revealed. Um, Patty, can you read 31 through 35? Oh, yes. Okay. Thou, O king, sawest and uh, beheld a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, uh, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and arms of silver and his belly and thighs of brass, his legs of iron and his feet a uh, part of iron and part of clay. Thou, thou sawest that, thou sawest till it, that a stone was cut out without hands and smote the image in the feet that was, uh, were made of iron and clay and it broke to pieces. Um, then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold broken to pieces together and became like a, a shaft of a, of a summer threshing floor and the wind carried them away and no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So we've had the preamble, now we've had the dream, now we have the dream revealed. Uh, Sherilyn, can you read? Uh, we can share this too, this is a rel relatively longer passage, 31 through 35. Read the first few verses on that. We just read that. We just read that. Um, 37, oh, okay. I, I have a typo. 30, 30, 37 through 45. So go 37 through uh, 41. Okay. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. When whosoever the, and wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over all, thou art his head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron <clears throat> that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, that there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay. And then Boniface, go ahead and finish with two through, 42 through 5. And as the toes of the feet were part of the island, of Ilon, and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And really, thou sowest iron mixed with mealy clay, they shall mingle them, themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to, an to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. 
and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and they shall stand forever for such as those who waste that the stone was cut out of mountain without hands and that it break in pieces the iron the brass the clay the silver and the gold the great god has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter and the dream is certain and the interpret interpretation thereof, thereof sure by the way boniface and i just finished uh, not that long ago doing a recording really looking at what all this means um, that too can be found on the site that i mentioned earlier um, it's about a 45 minute recording and it was really good the book of Daniel actually makes known quite a few themes though the power, through the power of prophecy. Here's another, Daniel 9, 25 through 27. Uh, Bruce. Daniel 9, 25 through 27. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The streets shall be built again in the wall even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he sh shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblations to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined, shall be poured upon the desolate. Actually, the entire chapter 9 of Daniel is a prophecy, but I would like to uncover a few of the mysteries hiding in these verses. As we do this, we can be encouraged that the same God who revealed these things to Daniel and later unlocked mysteries from within the book of Ephesians can also do the same for everyone alive this very day. So here are some questions to ponder. Who does this sound like it is referring to? Quote, unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks. Or this, after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Does Lucifer do anything that is not self-motivated? When will this event take place? And it shall come, it shall, con and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one. By the way, the reason I mentioned Lucifer back there is a lot of people want to attribute these verses to Lucifer. My point on that was, it can't be. It's very much talking about Christ and very much, I'll continue here. When will this event take place? And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. We could turn this into a prophecy, prophecy study, but the point of this commentary is to encourage. Thus, I encourage you to ponder such things as self-motivation, cut off, and the concept of seven years of tribulation at the end of time. Revelations of mysteries from within God's word is what Paul was speaking about and continues to do so, though if there is an error in the Bible, it is right here. Paul never uses only a few words to express his point. 
how could he be one of the greatest orators of all time if that were the case? So my point is where he said a few words, it's kind of a play on words that I'm doing there. Of course, the above is shared half-heartedly, but we should know that what he said was of extreme importance to him, just as your words should be, should also be. Can somebody read Psalm 114? Oops. Psalm 114. And I don't know who I left off with. <clears throat> I just read. Okay, Patty. Okay, so Psalm, Psalm 141, verse 3. Psalm 114. No, so, uh, I think I said that the first time. Uh, Psalm 141, verse 3. Okay. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth, and keep the door of my lips. And then Sherilyn, Proverbs 10, 31. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the forward tongue shall be cut out. These are talking about, you know, our words, what we, you know, the whole process. Proverbs 12, 18, Boniface? 12, 18. Uh, okay, have it. Uh, uh, the, there is that speaketh like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is held. And mm -hmm. then, um, was that was there something there? Proverbs fifteen one, Madam? Bruce. Proverbs fifteen one. Proverbs fifteen one. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. I don't know about any of you, but I've been in the situation of both. In fact, I've been the one with a ton going in both. And the, it's always worked out better if I give a soft answer. When I, when I do the opposite, and I have, it's, it's only, it's never worked out well. And I'm, I'm sure that others can relate with that as well. Ephesians 4.29. Patty. Okay, Ephesians. Okay, Ephesians 4.29. Let no right. corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Amen. And Sherilyn, I'm going to hand you uh, James 3.6. What we're looking at here is just the responsibility we have about this thing in front of us called the mouth and, and the tongue and the words and, and the communication. James 3.3-6. Three, three <clears throat> Excuse me. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth, but, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body 
and set us on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. And then one more verse here on this whole thought process as we wrap it up. Boniface, 1 Peter 3.10. 1 Peter 3.10. Okay. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. No guile. Mm -hmm. That he speak no guile. What is guile? Falsehood. <laughs> Deception. What's that? Fish bait. I'm not hearing the words. It what literally means fish bait. Deception. Yep. Did you hear me? Yes, I did. And I okay. agree. So what we're looking here is we're getting into verse into Ephesians three is it's really we're we're just opening up the whole rest of Ephesians. It's kind of like in second uh, part two of Ephesians, shall we say? Um, but how that by revelation we looked at revelations and dreams in the past, as well as pre uh, present for Paul's time, as well as what we receive today. He made known unto us the mystery and what mystery the mystery of christ being revealed to the world can you imagine the savior the king of the universe coming to this planet on a rescue mission for humanity that's what uh, that that's what the whole ephesians 3 3 really brings forward and then we spoke about ephesians 3 4 earlier um, would somebody like to close us in prayer? Would somebody like to close us in prayer? Patty? Okay, yes, I can. Our kind Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to come and read your word and to contemplate the, the meaning uh, that you have there for us. You want to reveal the mysteries of godliness to the human mind so that we can seek for that. And we just thank you that you have put it in your word that we may follow and that we may be uh, not entrapped into guile, but just the truth, Lord. We just thank you that you have uh, preserved the Bible for us. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to be with us this day. To give us peace of mind that comes only from knowing you. We pray these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen.